today, folks. I'll go over all three of these. And so let's get into it. Um, that said, those of you on YouTube, Rumble, Twitter, Facebook, remember, I only need about 25 minutes on those channels. The full episode is always on Epoch TV, E-P-O-C-H-T-V.com. So be sure to join us there. And that said, folks, let's jump into it. So first off, let's talk about what's happening with the unmanned, sorry, the uh, unidentified flying craft or flying objects, whatever you call them at this point. Everyone's calling them UFOs. Frankly, um, who knows? A UFO is merely an unidentified flying object. And so anything we cannot identify would fall into the category of UFO and does not necessarily mean aliens or anything like that. But let's talk about what's happening with it because that's actually not what I'm concerned about. My concern is the sudden escalation. There has been a sudden escalation in aggressiveness and most importantly, military aggressiveness. And we're not being told why there's this sudden escalation. Uh, we're not being given a reason for it. But let's go over the basic news on this. Reuters had this story, and there's actually been an update since, which I'll give you all. It says, U.S. shoots down unidentified cylindrical object over Canada. It says a U.S. F-22 fighter jet shot down an unidentified cylindrical object over Canada on Saturday. The second such incident in as many days as North America appeared to edge following, on edge following a week-long Chinese spy balloon saga that drew the, globe, the global spotlight. Separately, the U.S. military also scrambled fighter jets in Montana to investigate a radar anomaly that triggered a brief federal closure of airspace. And I'll, there's something very strange that happened in Hawaii as well, which sounds like this, a radar anomaly. There was weird green lasers in the sky, but let's go into this a bit more. It says those aircraft did not identify any object or correlate the radar hits. Something very strange happening. The North American Aerospace Defense Command, NORAD, said in a statement. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau first announced Saturday's shoot-down over the northern Yukon Territory, saying Canadian forces would recover and analyze the wreckage. Canadian Defense Minister Anita Nanda declined to speculate about the origin of the object, which she, she said was cylindrical in shape. She stopped short of calling it a balloon, but said it was smaller than the Chinese spy balloon that shot down off South Carolina's coast last uh, a week ago though similar in appearance. And since this happened, another aircraft, we don't know what it was, was shot down. And they're saying it was octagonal in shape. So we have a spherical one shot down and now an octagonal one, like more of a chew, you know, like, like the octagon, right? Um, it's weird. Um, now to me, Aside from the possibility of an alien invasion, which I think is everyone's kind of joking about, uh, there is actually something pretty serious with this. What we're watching right now is sudden escalation, and in particular, sudden military escalation. Um, it's, it's typically, rel it's relatively normal for countries to invade each other's airspaces. Uh, you often hear about Japan scrambling jets against Chinese aircraft. Uh, Ru both Russia and China actually very often uh, go into Canadian airspace. Uh, it's it's relatively normal. There's a couple of reasons you would do this. One of the main the main reason typically is you're doing intel gathering. Um, intelligence gathering is typically you want to see you want to see the command and control uh, protocols of a country. Um, and so you would fly an aircraft, for example, into, into their airspace. You'd see how long does it take for them to respond? What is the protocol of response? Like, you know, in terms of like who spots it, who do they alert, who reacts, what airbase deploys, what asset, for example, they, they scramble fighter jets to escort it out. What is the protocol? Where do they escort them to? Blah, blah, blah. And that, that's basically what they do. And this type of information is very useful if there ever was a real incident of war or if you actually wanted to fly fighter jets and, you know, do an airstrike on key targets in a country beginning a war. Um, a lot of countries do these types of things because they just want to basically kind of penetration test um, a nation. Now, 
What's different between now and what normally happens is normally they don't shoot down those aircraft. Normally they're not actually firing shots and downing craft because uh, that would get into the areas of what could constitute a war. Uh, typically countries don't want to escalate to that point. What we're watching now is countries escalating to that point, um, suggesting we, we may be in the early stages of an actual shooting war. Now, that being said, uh, Chuck Schumer said this. He said the latest flying objects shot down were likely balloons. And so, although, again, everyone's saying UFOs, little green men, um, take it for what it's worth. This is Chuck Schumer. But he's saying they were likely balloons, suggesting that this is the U.S. and Canada basically downing more of these Chinese spy aircraft. It says the U.S. believes that the flying objects shot down over North American airspace on Friday and Saturday were balloons, according to Senate Majority, uh, Majority Leader Chuck Schumer. Washington has been high alert since its military destroyed a suspected Chinese spy balloon earlier this month. While he didn't say specifically that the two latest objects were Chinese, Mr. Schumer told ABC on Sunday that Beijing was likely using a crew of balloons that had probably been all over the world, which we're hearing now there's been another one spotted, for example, in Costa Rica, uh, which actually the CCP admitted to. Responding to queries about Schumer's remarks, a spokesperson for the U.S. Department of Defense said the latest two objects did not closely, res sorry, did not closely resemble the, er the original balloon, which actually suggests it's something else, um, which is pretty important for me at least. And they say they were much smaller, again, as we noted. Three objects have been shot down. It's been one more now. Why does this matter? Now, this could mean one of two things, as far as I'm concerned. On one side, it could mean that basically the United States and Canada have enacted a zero-tolerance policy for the Chinese Communist Party basically violating national sovereignty by flying spy balloons over our territory. The other side of it would be that basically after assessing the downed air balloon, there was something of deep enough concern to make them very rapidly enact, you know, basically defensive regions, um, you know, no-go zones in terms of airspace, and to begin launching a very aggressive military counterattack on any flying objects that are of foreign nature in our airspace. So it's one of two things, in other words, either it's politics and maintaining national sovereignty, or there was something deeply concerning enough that we are not being told about that would justify such a large-scale escalation without having the verbal pushback you would expect from the first option here, to me suggesting there's something actually bigger going on that we're not being told about. Let me show you a bit more on this. And then, folks, we're going to go also to the train derailment. We're also going to go in the, the, leak, the leak of gas, poisonous gas into the sky. We're also going to go today into um, what happened with the Nord Stream pipeline. And it turns out Biden looks like he, he destroyed the Nord Stream pipeline, uh, which would be an act of war against both Russia and possibly Germany. But let's go deeper into this first. Representative Matt Rosendale said this on Twitter. He said, I am in constant communication with NORCOM, North American Command, and they have just advised me that they have confidence that there is an object, and it was not an anomaly. I am waiting to receive visual confirmation. Our nation's security is my priority. After this happened as well, the United States has imposed sanctions against six different Chinese firms over the spy balloon programs. In my opinion, this, this would be the normal and, frankly, necessary course of action, something I'm glad they're doing against the Chinese Communist Party. Otherwise, the CCP is going to basically try to win the narrative battle. By sanctioning companies tied to this whole thing, uh, it's making a clear economic attack, a counterattack, saying this type of action is not, is not good, we do not support it, and you'll be held accountable for it. Uh, for the CCP, one of the big things they understand is money. And so you hit them economically, they really feel it. Uh, Trump understood that point. If, if you want to hit the CCP, hit them financially. That's one of the big things. Because as I mentioned before, too, you know, basically corrupt Wall Street is propping up the CCP. Corrupt banking and corrupt international finance are propping up the Chinese Communist Party. It's uh, dirty companies like BlackRock and so on that really, and, and others, of course, but 
this type of foreign investment to the CCP that's really keeping them going. And so hitting that or suggesting we might even pull that out for them is massive because that that's that's end game for the CCP once it hits that level. So the U.S. has made, put sanctions now on six of these different Chinese companies, and the Epic Times says this, the United States has blacklisted six Chinese entities it found to have aided Beijing surveillance balloon programs in the wake of one such balloon that floated over the United States for a week, gathering intelligence. In a statement on February 10th, the Commerce Department identified five companies and a research institute involved in the effort to support aerospace programs, including aerospace and balloons and related material components for the Chinese military, also known as the People's Liberation Army. Why does this matter? So, um, you know, I've been covering Chinese military and spy operations since 2008. This has been kind of my wheelhouse. Um, I also did some of the real heavy investigations into the structure of Chinese military, uh, into the structure of Chinese military systems, basically. When they say a research institute was involved with this, normally you would think like a academic institution or a think tank, that that is not always the case. Um, under the under the structure of the Chinese military, I'll, I'll give you a bit of this. They had the General Staff Department, which runs a lot of its military operations. General Staff Department has at least four main branches that are important to know about. Um, the second department would be human intelligence, spy operations. The General Staff Department, third department, would be signals intelligence, um, when Obama sanctioned the Chinese hackers, like this is like, you know, the cyber guys and so on, uh, Unit 61398 of, of the General Staff Department, Third Department, were, was the one that the hackers were under that Obama had sanctioned. And when Trump later sanctioned Chinese hackers, those guys were actually to the Fourth Department, uh, which would be um, electronic warfare, uh, ELINT, you would call it, electronics intelligence, which would work on satellites and that type of thing. Uh, the CCP has since restructured its military. A lot of the general staff department is now in the, in the strategic support force. But important to note, and why I'm going on this small tangent, is that um, is alongside the different hacker groups, these various operational units, like, for example, Unit 61398, you also have research institutes, one of the main ones being the 61 Research Institute, uh, which actually runs a lot of the hacker operations. They're like the governing one, basically, um, which I've I actually, I, I think I was one of the main people who exposed that several years ago, um, suggesting basically that they're going after the entities that were running these operations. And this gives us a bit more information on maybe the intelligence that the Pentagon had, uh, where they said they were pretty, pretty much, you know, just 100% confident, right? Uh, the Pentagon suggested it was basically 100% confident that, that was not a civilian spy, you know, weather balloon or whatever the CCP called it, and that they were confident this was from the the, uh, the PRC, they said the People's Republic of China, which would mean CCP, meaning it was government and not just some random balloon, meaning the Pentagon had intelligence and very likely the entities that had just been sanctioned are the ones they were very likely tracking and knew were behind this. Now, that being said, there's some weird stuff going on. And again, I'll say it, my, my big concern with this is that we're, see, we're seeing escalation. We're seeing now not just sanctions, right, which, which would be normal escalation. The sanctions would be normal escalation. We're seeing military escalation. And for me, at least, that would suggest that something happened that we're not being told about. Now, normal escalation would, would include basically two different things. You would have sanctions. You would have, they call in, you know, the Chinese diplomat or the Chinese ambassador, and they would, you know, basically just shame them and say, hey, we're unhappy with your actions. And then you would say, do it again, and we'll shoot you down. We're not seeing that third part. We're not seeing that do it again and we'll shoot you down. They're just shooting them down. And to me, that suggests, again, that there's something we're not being told. To have, to have that normal step, that normal protocol skipped, suggests to me there's something we're not being told. And that militarily, the Biden administration and the Canadian government, they basically see, for some reason, enough of a reason, enough, enough of a concern to take very drastic, direct military action against pretty much any military aircraft of foreign nature, 
or any aircraft in general that's unidentified flying over American or Canadian airspace. Um, it maybe they found something on the downed air balloon that was of concern. We don't know. Um, maybe they maybe they learned something by monitoring the communications coming in and out of the spy balloon, which they could do through basic electronic warfare. We don't know. But something happened. Something happened that elicited enough concern to justify hot, like hot war, right? Mil direct military hot war shooting down of aircraft um, with, a zero, with, with, with what looks like a zero tolerance policy. Uh, we're, we're watching a zero tolerance policy un unfold right now. Now, remember I talked about how, in addition to the aircraft, there was also a radar anomaly, which caused concern for the United States. There was some weird radar anomaly. Actually, this happened in two locations. The other one was actually in Hawaii. And we're not really being given, we're not really being given clear answers over what's going on in Hawaii, but something very strange happened. Let me show you this. This is Newsweek. Newsweek said this. Mysterious green lasers over Hawaii were likely from Chinese satellite. Now, I've personally never heard of satellites emitting green lasers that are visible with the naked eye, but heck, there's a lot of stuff that I've never heard about happening right now, let's be honest. Um, but let's go over this. It says, on January 28, the same day a suspected Chinese spy balloon was detected by the U.S. over the coast of Alaska, a camera watching the night atop a mountain in Hawaii caught a series. So it was a camera, it may not be visible to the naked eye. But a camera watching the night atop a mountain in Hawaii caught a series of green laser beams darting across the sky, lasting a matter of seconds, just as it turned 2 a.m. local time, and which would be 7 a.m. Eastern time. Footage from the camera caught the band's arcing left to right footage shows. While the owners of the camera initially supposed it was a NASA mapping satellite, right, they thought initially, the U.S. Airspace Organization has said that it was not them, suggesting it may have been the Chinese. Further in its states, on January 29th, it, was, it posted the footage on YouTube suggesting that the beams could have come from a remote sensing laser, laser allimeter from NASA's ICES-AT blah, 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 satellite, launched in September 2018 as part of its Earth observe, observe, Observing System with the goal of measuring and monitoring the impact of climate change. Uh, with the goal, sorry, and then it says, you know, according to NASA, it is able to emit 10,000 pulses a second. It turns out that it was not NASA, so NASA though, so that option is off the table. And NASA, NASA would not have a problem admitting that because that would supposedly be normal. It says, however, on February 6th, the description of the video was updated with a new explanation for the curtain of, of light beams over Hawaii, citing Anthony Martino, a deputy project scientist working for the ICAS AT2 mission. The NAOJ note said the lights were, quote, not by their instrument, but by others. In other words, there were mysterious green lasers over Hawaii, the normal the normal suspect would just be a nasa satellite it was not nasa so something else was causing this we actually don't have clear answers on what it was but the the suspicion is that it's a chinese satellite um in reality they don't actually know that would be important though because we're seeing now incursions on the u.s canadian border which, if you understand the Arctic region and especially Russian military actions, if there ever were a Russian invasion of the United States, it would come from the north, not from the west. Um, it, would, it would come across the Arctic region. And in terms of missile attacks or airstrikes, that is the easiest route to attack the United States. Um, you know, the, the way the United States is set up is basically like, like, a, like, a, geo, like a geological bastion. The United States is like a fortress continent. We have very large defensive regions, but large bodies of water on both sides, a very narrow pass to the south of us in Latin America, which unfortunately we've undermined by throwing the borders wide open. And then we have the Arctic region, Canada, which does not have a very strong military, which the United States boat mostly provides to them. And um, basically the United States kind of defends Canadian airspace. 
Russia does incursions very regularly, aircraft incursions, and the defensive region coming from the north, it, even though it would still not be easy, would be the main route of attack if we were in war with Russia. That being said now, we're seeing two regions. We're seeing that region, right, having incursions and weird satellite anomalies and so on, right? And we're seeing the Pacific, which for China would be the main thing. And remember, one of the major U.S. naval bases would be Hawaii. So Hawaii, Guam would be the first initial targets in any kind of major attack from the CCP. Um, it is of concern. Now, that said, some other stuff happened because I mentioned these areas, right? The FAA abruptly canceled its national defense airspace over Lake Michigan. And Fox reported this. The Federal Aviation Administration announced on Sunday that it, was unex that, it had, that it has unexpectedly lifted the National Defense Airspace Declaration over a portion of Lake Michigan. Remember, they rapidly announced this. It says the FAA has not provided an explanation for its initial ban of uncivilian aircraft in the area over Lake Michigan on Sunday, following a lifting of the ban just hours later. So it was a very rapid ban on just airspace and, you know, things going into that airspace in general. We did not really have clear answers on why that was. And a few hours later, they lifted it. Um, it's strange actions that, again, were not being given clear answers to. And again, this is my big concern with all this, is that we're seeing a lot of stuff like this. We're seeing actual military aircraft shooting down craft. We're seeing weird anomaly being blamed on satellites. We're seeing strange behavior with national air defense declarations, not just there, but elsewhere as well. And we're not really being told what's going on. Um, something very likely happened that was of deep enough concern to justify these actions. We're not being told what the justification is. Remember, I'll state again, that if this is just ideological, if it was just, for example, the United States saying, hey, we're no longer going to tolerate China, you know, coming into our airspace without asking, they would, they would make more, they would typically make more noise about it. It would be more of a diplomatic and ideological issue. And then having public awareness and public support for it would be like kind of a normal thing. They're not doing that, right? You, you, you get, they're, not, they're not following normal action, normal expected action for things like this. And again, for me, that suggests that there's something going on that they're not telling us, something of concern that justifies a rapid kind of escalation in, in military hot war. At the same time, the Chinese Communist Party is saying it's going to start shooting down aircraft. And it says here, this is Forbes, China says it's preparing to shoot down unidentified flying object near the Yellow Sea. It says authorities in China are preparing to shoot down an unidentified flying object currently over Shandong province, according to Chinese state media. And while it was not immediately clear who the flying object might belong to, Every account is now looking to the skies with more skepticism, especially since the U.S. So ever since the U.S. military shot down a Chinese spy balloon over a little over a week ago, it says, "quote Local maritime authorities in East China's Shandong Province announced on Sunday that they had spotted an unidentified flying object in waters near the coastal city of Rijiao in the province, and were preparing to shoot it down, reminding fishermen to be safe amid messages." China's state-controlled Global Times said in a tweet Sunday morning. The city of Rijiao in Shandong province is a port city on the Yellow Sea, roughly halfway between Beijing to the northwest and Shanghai to the southeast. Directly to the east is South Korea. Now, the CCP might just be making noise about this because they're trying to do like a tit-for-tat thing and saying, oh, well... America is being aggressive too. I'd say this would actually be normal behavior from the CCP. Uh, it's not clear whether they're telling the truth or not, but you know they're trying to fight the narrative war, and so this would be normal behavior, whether it's real or not. The bigger issue, though, is remember the CCP declared an ADIZ uh, air defense authorization zone, right? ADIZ over the South China Sea, um, including basically in, in what would be considered to actually legally international waters which they've declared sovereignty over. If the United States has now basically justified the shooting down of aircraft when 
again, national sovereignty is being violated. The CCP might, might actually escalate in that region too. Um, that means civilian aircraft would be at risk, although I doubt they'd shoot down civilian aircraft because that would that would look really bad on them. It would make them look like terrorists. Uh, they, but they may start doing that. They also may start targeting satellites. Remember, the spy balloon was high Earth orbit, if I remember right. And if you, when you deal with satellite systems, satellites sometimes aren't actually that high. Uh, the CCP does have anti-satellite weapons, ASAT, right? Anti-satellite attack technology, right? Uh, ASAT weapons, they would call them ASAT. And remember that basically satellites are one of the enabling factors of the U.S. military. When you talk about Chinese warfare programs like the Assassin's Mace, the main strategy they would have, the initial step in a war against America, would be ASAT attacks because they need to destroy the command and control systems and they need to destroy the targeting systems, uh, the targeting and navigation systems, which satellites would play a huge role in. Although the U.S. military has other things in place to deal with such a situation, although it would still impact us. We could start seeing things escalate, in other words, and I, I do believe we're watching the beginnings of this. All right, folks, I want to go into what's happening with the Nord Stream pipeline. The Biden administration is now being accused of having destroyed the Nord Stream pipeline. Uh, there's pretty, pretty credible information on this. An investigative journalist came out with it, Seymour Hirsch. Uh, he's stating a lot of things that I reported as well, but he's claiming to have sources he's not fully naming. Uh, but personally, I think what he's saying is credible enough. And he has, he's pretty much laid out the entire story, including background and backroom deals of the Biden administration, well, backroom conversations, the Biden administration planning, launching, carrying out, then covering up the destruction of the Nord Stream pipeline, cutting off uh, Russian gas to Europe. This would not only be a, this would not only constitute an act of war, an actual act of war against Russia, this would also constitute an act of war against Germany. Now, I personally doubt Germany would regard it as an act of war, personally. But um, it could. And, and more so than that, uh, you are going to watch people now in Europe who are facing high energy costs, high gas prices, whose basic quality of life is going down because of the unavailability of energy. Remember, they're, they're rationing energy in Europe. That is no longer, you know, being, that's no longer going to be blamed on Ukraine or Russia. Remember, that's the narrative. It's Russia's fault. Uh, Russia's fault. That's now going to be blamed on the United States. And this is pretty, this is pretty serious, actually. Um, I want to go into that, folks. And I know everybody wants to know what's going on with this train derailment and the leaking of toxic chemicals into the into the atmosphere, into the sky, these toxic clouds. Um, I want to go into both of these stories now. For that, though, let's jump over to Epic TV exclusively. Um, just real quick, folks. Again, I know we're on YouTube and stuff, and uh, I'll always do about. I'll, I, I typically do an hour and a half show, uh, but I only do about 25, 30 minutes on YouTube Rumble and so on. Uh, so join us on Epoch TV. It's our uncensored video platform. And frankly, we're demonetized on YouTube. And YouTube doesn't like me very much. So come join us on Epoch TV. Before we jump over, though, folks, let me show you a quick trailer. I spoke with Sean Lin. Uh, about, he's a he's a, mili a former military virologist. This was one of the guys working for the U.S. Army in these bio labs we hear about. And um, I, I spoke with him recently about some key questions I think a lot of people are having right now. One of the big ones being what's really going on in China right now, because there's some very strange stuff going on uh, when it comes to COVID-19. And I also asked him about some of the reporting from Project Veritas, James O'Keefe, which has its kind of weird issues right now as well. There's some infighting. Uh, but asked about the Pfizer videos and the allegations of directed mutation and gain of function, because I know a lot of people have questions about that. Um, Sean Lin is a great expert on this. Let me show you a quick trailer of what we talked about, and you can watch that on Epic TV. Let me show you. Almost everybody talk about their cities. You know, have so many people got infected, and many people die, and then you see the phenomena, that long line in a, a funeral service, right? People even drive their own car, deliver the corpse to the crematories. 
But people were speculating, you know, the CCP was facing a crisis, which was the aging population. They don't know what to do with their older people. The government used the money from the social welfare, from the patients, from the Medicare systems. And now, uh, if you got so many people, senior people die, it will save the government a lot of trouble. Many senior people die, society get healthier, and the money when they're being stolen, the whole issue get totally covered up. Tremendous number of people die in China, but the governments keep lying about it. Again, folks, uh, important interview. We don't just talk about China. We also talk about Pfizer and the Project Veritas findings on that. Uh, an important episode. Be sure to watch on Epoch TV. That said, folks, let's go into the Nord Stream pipeline and the Ohio tra uh, train derailment and what's going on with these. For that, though, come join us on Epoch TV. Let's jump over now. And, folks, thank you for being here.